from my understanding, it could be maybe their shy or nervousness or in their genetics, they cannot, um, their brain doesn't compute. They think too much, I believe. Nerves, pressure at home, growing up. I think it's something you're not born with. I think it's something you learn. My understanding of it is it starts when people are younger and it's something that they try to work through as they get older. I really, I really don't know too much about it. The problem for lack of self-confidence and uh, unassurances about uh, word and what they're trying to say to uh, the audience. Stuttering is a hard problem to define. Uh, it's something that people do, not something that happens to them. When I have a lot of trouble speaking, I think the first thing that goes on through my mind is I question what it is about that situation or that person I'm speaking to that is causing me to have that kind of trouble. To Boy Scout camp with someone who stuttered and by the end of the two months we were together I was stuttering you can catch it well, stuttering is not contagious uh, we don't know what causes it but we do know when it happens uh, we know that it occurs when somebody is stressed or when there is something important that that person wants to say and feels under pressure to say it clearly and uh, without any stuttering, they don't want to talk. Uh, that's the thing that makes the stuttering a lot worse. Stuttering has always been like a really like important part of my life just because whenever I speak, it's like right there and it's like up front, you know. Um, and so I think a lot of times it made me feel like when I was younger, um, it made me feel kind of different from people and I didn't really know you know why I sounded different and why people kind of made fun of me and stuff like that um, and it was it was hard. The way I feel when I stutter has changed over the years. For a long time it was very embarrassing and it made me feel very self-conscious and made me feel not very good about myself. It isn't so much uh, that you have to be cured, you have to learn how to handle it, how to take care of what you want to say and to say anything that you want to say at any time to anybody. How would I prefer people to act when I'm stuttering? First of all, I don't have a lot of control over that. So I need to accept however people do react and not be disturbed or upset if the reaction is one that makes me uncomfortable. I prefer for people not to finish my sentences for me. I prefer for people to continue to maintain eye contact with me. And I definitely don't want them to feel uncomfortable. Speech therapy has brought to my life um, a real sense of just assuredness and just being okay with it and um, I did learn techniques you know um, but I, I don't use them as much as I should <laughs> but even though I don't use them I think the stuttering speech therapy has just really like helped me um, be, be okay you know with it and and realize that you know everybody has something that that they want to try and hide even if it's not you know stuttering or it's not you know like an an obvious problem that that nobody's perfect and that you should just try and be who you are and not hide stuff stuttering uh, leads to problems uh, where you uh, the stutter doesn't want to talk, wants to avoid it, tries hard to be fluent, and can't be. Um, and just practicing fluency is not 
going to change anything for a stutter. You can't get better by practicing fluency because when it's most important for you to be fluent, you won't be. Therapy has made a huge difference in my life. The speech therapy program with Vivian Sheehan that I've been part of now for almost three years has completely changed how I feel about stuttering and how I feel about myself and my speech. Until I began to work with Vivian, I always tried to hide my stuttering. That was the one thing that was consistent. Whether I used one trick or another or how I did it may have changed, but I always tried to hide it. I would never talk about it. And my goal in any conversation was that I wouldn't stutter. And now that's not true anymore. The cure for stuttering is to go ahead and do it and allow yourself to stutter and be able to face the fact that you will stutter maybe for the rest of your life, but not in the old way. There are a lot of things that stutters do. We have to have them um, find out what they do and what things they use to try to be fluent and then forget those things and overcome them. And it's, the older they are, the harder it is for them to change all those old habits. My worst situations with stuttering, I think, are all the times that I didn't speak because I was afraid to stutter. All the times that I just avoided the possible embarrassment or because out of fear of what other people would think of me. When I was younger and my mom was trying to get me into speech therapy and she really kind of didn't understand what it was and she was just trying to help but she kind of felt like it was her fault. Um, and there was just a dynamic between us that was really kind of uncomfortable. Like, like I've always been able to deal with, you know, my peers, you know, laughing and kind of making jokes and not understanding. But because it was my mom who was really like unsure and just got frustrated because I was being hurt and she wanted to help and didn't know how, like that was a really like hard situation to, you know, to deal with. But there are no positive things that you do to stop stuttering. There is no way that you can overcome stuttering and stop it. You have to learn how to deal with it every day, how to work with it, to accept the fact that you stutter sometimes and you need to know how to do it easily and without fear and shame.